How's it going YouTube? Okapurga James here. So the last section of how I would do a normal day's grind away from the stream, away from YouTube, all that stuff is I would analyze all the marked hands that I've made. So even though I'm now a day late on doing that, that is generally what I would do. So I would play those games. Normally I would have a lot of questions like I want answered immediately. So straight after the session, I'd go and check those hands. Sometimes though, there will just be too many and I've got other stuff to do. So I would leave. And then when I uh, come back, before I start grinding again, I would still go through all the hands that we've marked. So today in this episode, we're gonna go through all the hand histories that I marked throughout this um, grind. We're gonna use GTO base where we can and then anything that we can't, we'll go back to that later at the end of the video. If this is the kind of content that you like, just make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Uh, let me know in the comments because these videos often get a lot less views, mainly because it's more uh, difficult to, to like get involved, get, uh, maybe to get something out of it, you have to know quite a bit. So I do need your support if, if you guys like this content. If you don't, then fair enough, and I won't do it anymore. Anyway, so very first hand that we want to look at. I'm going in the order of the first hand that I marked all the way to the last hand I marked. So first hand we marked was ace nine, button versus big blind. We've got ace nine of hearts. We raised and Andrix puppy called. So we're button versus blind. I think what I wanted to check was how to deal with a check raise on this board. So I check, uh, sorry, they checked to me and in position we went from the bet with the ace nine. Quite happy to bet it. Um, with all the backdoor draws we've got, the fact that our ace high might be good, and that is generally what a solver wants to do. Um, so I'm not learning too much from that. The raise size they make, okay, and then we're meant to call it every single time. So really that was just one spot that I wanted to see. Am I meant to be calling this? Because I do, and, and it seems fine. So that's good. Um, turn card seems like a fairly straightforward call for me. I can understand the idea of possibly raising, but I didn't. And on the river, they shoved and I folded. So we good. I think I'm fine with that. Right, let's go on to the next hand. Okay, next one, we got eight four suited. It's a raised pot. Small blind versus big blind. Uh, I did a min raise this stack size. Apparently we're meant to be limping. Now this for me is a spot where actually my range is gonna be a little bit different to uh, GTO base here because I don't have a limping range at this stack depth. I just find it too difficult to have a min raise range and a shoving range and all that stuff. So I just min raise or uh, shove when I'm below 13, well, 13, 14 big blinds, I, I switched to that. Um, whereas, if you look at the overall frequencies here, um, calling 17%, raising 14%, there's even a raise to 2.5 big blinds of 5%, and then shoving as well. So they do definitely play differently. They've got their calls in, so you can play as wide a range as possible. I just prefer doing the min raise instead. But it is basically a part of the strategy, so it still should work. Um, they've called, we flopped top pair and we bet, and they called on the turn. I went for a bet, and uh, I think this is where I kind of had a drop off in feeling what I should be doing. So we did make a mistake here, I think it's just a check. Mostly because when you min raise, um, let's have a look pre-flop, when you min raise your opponent, um, he's gonna shove a lot of the high cards. What I was interested in, and I think a lot of people do a bit wrong, is that uh, even pocket eights onwards, pocket eights to pocket aces, uh, you should just be flatting when you're in position in the big blind against the small blind min raise. I don't think many people do that, but, um, I was kind of looking at it from a perspective of maybe they're going to flat hands like pocket fives, pocket fours, pocket threes, pocket twos, which is actually never, not, not many regs are doing that. So maybe 
maybe I should have thought about that. I mean, even in GTO base here, it doesn't like value betting. Uh, the eight it prefers just checking and uh, letting them do their thing. So I think we made, yeah, we made the mistake there. They called and then on the river we checked and they went all in and we fold, which is, yeah, I think I'm fine with that. It's just that turn bet that I think we did wrong. Next time we should be checking. Let's say we check and they bet we would want to call. I guess the question I want to ask is, do we call all the way down? So let's look at that. Um, queen turn. I'm the small blind, so we check with our 8-4. Our opponent, let's say our opponent bets 3, and we've got the 8-4. We call. And then the river was 10 of spades. And with 8-4, obviously going to check, right? Yeah. You can check the entire range and they are going to shove if they're going to bet at all uh, and then 8-4 would call all the way down it's very very close in terms of EV whether to call all the way down our opponent should be betting 67% of the time so very very often for us to make that call I think most regs will actually on that run out if they're going to bet the turn I think they're going to bet the river with lots of bluffs so yeah I think we can still safely make that call against the reg. Uh, so yeah, from that we learnt that I, even though I think my range is pretty good, uh, sorry, my hand is pretty strong, it's better to just check it and then pretty much call even on bad turns and rivers, just play it very simple. Because we don't have the kicker, I think that's the main reason, if we had the higher kicker should be a different story. Let me just check <laughs> once more, one more second. With the eights, with the better kicker, do we bet them? 10 8, jack 8, king 8, queen 8. Wow, okay, we check all of them. Well, then, then I don't know. <laughs> then I don't know what I'm talking about. We just check a lot there. We check 71% of the time on that queen turn. So a lot of checks. So yeah, I think I'm just barreling a bit too much there. Okay, next hand, please. So this one we got Jack-10, uh, small blind versus big blind. These are often like the, the more tough spots, small blind versus big blind, right? So I limped Jack-10 and they raised. Obviously once I limp, it's a snap call. And on the flop, we check, they bet small and I felt like I needed to defend here, even though I haven't hit this board. I do have um, a club. I do have diamonds. The eight can kind of connect with the 10 and the jack. The ace kind of connects with it as well. So I was like, okay, we've got two overs to the eight. I think we need to stick around. Um, I think I wanted to see if I should be raising this at all. The answer is no, so that's good. The turn I check, they check behind. The river, I was like, okay, am I meant to now be um, turning my hand into a bluff? I think I remember. And I was like, no, I think there's other hands I would prefer to bluff than this one. Um, I'm going to look at what kind of hands we would want to bluff in that spot now that we check called the flop. So I'm going to take out the sets and the two pairs and the top pairs. Um, I'm going to leave the second pair. So second pair is king x. Most of my King X hands I'd want to bet by the river. Okay, that makes sense. Now we're looking at the no pair, no draws. The type of stuff that wants to bet is just the weaker holdings. So we've got the 9-6, because 9 high is just not going to win. We've got 9-7, 10-9. Yeah, it's mostly just the lower cards. Um, the Jack 2 and Jack 3 and Jack 6 suited. So I want to see what kind of... And the, this is it's jack two of clubs. Why would you want to bet the clubs? Oh, okay, you'd want to bet all of them. That's okay then. Yeah, makes sense. Just the weaker part and portion of the range that doesn't have showdown value is betting. So I like that hand. On to the next one. 
This one we got ace five suited and we're on the button against the big blind. We raise, they call. Uh seven four free board, we check. I was thinking about making the larger bet size as well. For sure, but yeah, we went for the check and that's fine. Oh no. Uh-huh. Okay, I read this wrong. Right. That is interesting. So, uh, when you're on the button and you're up against the big blind, or let, let's say we're in his perspective, or their perspective, when they're in the big blind, facing the button raise, and then the board comes all low cards, I don't know any regs at the moment that are leading out the big blind versus button, even on boards like this. Um, I have done some leads on low boards myself, but I haven't seen any regs do it to me. Uh, they should be doing it quite often with King-5 on this spot, in this board. I wonder how much of the time actually, overall, total strategy, are they meant to be betting. 25% of the time on this board they're meant to be betting. That is useful information to know. It did confuse me though, because apparently I did bet and I bet half pot, which is fine. Yeah, I mean, checking and betting, they're all fine with me. Didn't realize that the small bet sizes liked a lot, even on the low, all low card board, but I'm okay with that. Um, let's just look at overall strategy because most of the time here, I'm going to be betting half pot rather than betting one, or I'm going to bet the larger sizing. So it's actually got a very wide mix here. Anything from pot to min bet uh, is being used quite often. So. I think I prefer to just settle on one sizing, half pot sizing. Learning all of these different bet sizings is no good. Maybe I can have pot and uh, half pot because there, I'm sure there are some hands where you just want to protect really desperately. But yeah, half pot. Half pot is my go-to there and that's what we did with the ace five and they called. On the turn, we've picked up the flush draw and we got the straight draw. And uh, I think this is the point where I wanted to check what I what I did was okay. And what I went for was a check, and I'm glad that we did that. Okay, good. So I marked this because I wasn't sure if this was the right kind of straight draw, flush draw type hand that we want to check back. Now I want to see, let's say I've got a hand like king five, of clubs. How would I play that? I want to see that. King five of clubs, for example, is always betting. So we're just checking back the ace five of clubs because it's still got showdown value, I think. Right? Yeah, the EV on it is still quite high with the ace five, and I think that's just because it's got some showdown value. So yeah, we made another nice nice play there. Uh, they made a bet size that, that's okay. And we should always be raising and they should always be calling. Okay, cool. These hands are looking good. I'm glad we're not making huge mistakes. That's, that's all I can say. Um, generally in, in these uh, spots, you want to find just maybe one or two spots in the session where you've made a big mistake because then it's easy to learn. If you've done like 10 mistakes all uh, in one session, it makes you feel a bit bad inside. So uh, the first ones being wrong, uh, sorry, the first ones being right does help. <laughs> it really does help. And then um, you do want to have marked some hands where you did some bad stuff though, because then you've got something to learn and improve off of, right? So this next hand is button versus big blind. We've got ace two. Oh no, we don't. They've got ace two and they raised, they shouldn't have. We've called and we checked and they bet pot and we called. So we're just looking at it from my perspective, not their perspective, I guess. We're just looking at our hand. Um, yeah, we called the pot bet. On the turn, we check, they check behind. On the river, we check, and they check behind. 
I wanted to see on the river, am I meant to be turning this hand into a bluff? The answer is, it's not super bad if I did. But the kind of hands we want to turn into a bluff, I guess, are more like weak pairs. Yeah, weak pairs and nothings. So let's pull that up. Yeah, if I've somehow got nine highs in any way, if I've got anything that hasn't hit at all, somehow we're going to bet it. But the same also if we've got a queen or a jack. Yeah, okay. That's 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 how I was, I think my thought process was while I was grinding, so that's cool. What right about that? Next hand, we got king six. Okay, why did I mark this one? Small blind versus big blind, they raised, we called, and they bet, and I think I just folded. Yeah, and I just wanted to see, am I meant to be calling here? Um, I think it's fine to just fold. Like I, I just wanted to see, do I, do I just need the club to make the call? Let's have a look. King six with the king of clubs. King six off, king of clubs, and six of clubs. Okay, yeah, you just need the club, and then it's okay. Right, breezing through these hands, doing them, playing them good. I'm happy with that. Ace King cannot be supported. Let me have a look at why that is. Got the replayer up. It's a uh, small blind, free bets, non all in. And then I wanted to know if I meant to stack off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is quickly open simple freeway okay so the software we're using now is called simple freeway apologies if it's a bit small but we're just doing it for this individual solve so what i did was i took our range for free betting it's meant to be aces through to jacks and then some bluffs uh, i've got ace king off king queen suited ace queen suited that's generally the range uh, that i'm using um and then my opponent is meant to be calling these kind of hands, so it does include aces. They had 9-8 suited, which isn't meant to be a call. But yeah, anyway, I cancelled that. Uh, we're meant to bet our entire range. We're meant to be small betting 81% of the time. We're meant to be straight up shoving 6% of the time. Uh, we had ace-king off. We had ace of hearts king of clubs specifically i don't think it matters too much i made the small bet but it doesn't mind just straight up shoving if that was something i would be a bit worried about anyway i bet and i got shoved on i want to see what i'm meant to be doing here surely it's always a call yeah yeah it's a very plus easy call to make once we put that many chips in it's just gonna have to go in i think just pot committed and uh, that's all i wanted to check like Number one, am I meant to be betting range? Because it felt like I should. Uh, all this low card board after a free bet. They shouldn't hit it too well. We've got loads of over pair type hands. They've only got like trapped aces and that's about it. And then lots of stuff that hasn't hit. So I think we should be putting max pressure on. That's what I wanted to see. Sometimes there are spots that GTO base can't do, but Simple Freeway does them pretty well and uh, solves it really fast. That's why I use it over Simple Post a lot, but just it's just so much faster um, and easier to do. But yeah, let's get back into GTO base and keep uh, plugging away at those spots. So far, I've been doing a lot better than I expected. <laughs> Normally with these things, uh, I'm going to be making all sorts of mistakes. So I'm a, I don't know if I could say I'm pleasantly surprised. Generally, the point of these anal analyzing spots is that, hang on, let's put the right frame on. Point of these analyzing spots is that you find out new and important things, right? Uh, I guess every now and again it does help to see that you're right in some spots. Because, I mean, today it was pretty tough. We ended up with a chippy V of 10, <laughs> which isn't great at all. That's not, that's not winning player chippy V. But like I said, individual sessions don't really count. You've got to look at it from many thousands of games perspective so this one with button versus big blind we've raised minimum they've called 
We've now got the gut shot on a jack 10 freeboard. They check, we check behind. Okay, so what I wanted to see was, I remember now, um, I felt completely lost once I've checked behind. Because normally my play is to bet, but I felt like I should occasionally check behind these king highs. So it is okay, EV wise, it's okay. Um, I think betting one is clearly the, the simpler play, just betting the absolute minimum on this board is the simpler play but we don't always do it simple so yeah I don't mind how we did it um, when they bet on the turn I wanted to know what the heck am I meant to do because it felt like folding was pretty weak and uh, that is the play that I should have been doing so it's a very very slight mistake here with King 9 in terms of EV but range wise just meant to be folding it always uh, now that I didn't, I have to be folding the river, right? Yeah, okay, and we do. So I think we screwed up here on the turn. Um, in fact, maybe I screwed up directly on the flop. Don't need to make my life hard. We just bet the flop next time. Two high card board, we can do them small bets. I think it's something that I don't do enough. So a jack-10 board, I think a lot of the time, the sizing that I'm using here from the button is going to be a bit bigger and I'm going to be checking too much. If you look at the range here, I'm meant to be betting 84% of the time and only checking 15%. So I'm just meant to be betting that minimum size. So I think I'm making a range mistake there. So it's good to see and hopefully we can uh, plug that leak going forward. Okay, on to the next hand we got Jack Free. Uh, it's a limped pot, heads up. I'm in the big blind. They've limped, I've checked. Very standard. So, Montone board. I think I wanted to see what I meant to do directly on the flop here because our got shot isn't that useful. Our flush draw isn't that useful and I just don't feel great about this spot. So I really wanted to see, am I meant to be raising? Am I meant to be folding? What is meant to be happening? So we checked, they bet um, half pot and we called, which is the standard play. Apparently we could raise it as well. I don't know if I've got the heart for that. Um, we checked, they bet, we called, and then on the river we checked and they checked. So. Everything else played as per normal. I just wanted to see, so I knew that having a low heart by itself was not enough reason to call, but I'm guessing, I guess that gut shot is uh, enough equity to make the call, so it was right. Good, next hand we got 9-5. I think this is also a limped pot, but this time it's small blind versus big blind. So our opponent is playing wider than they should be. Are they trying to do that as an exploit on me? I don't know. Are they trying to do it in an exploit on the population? We don't know. But it is quite a bit wider than they should be. I've got 9.5 and I checked. We could raise it as well, but we went for the check. Uh, they checked on the flop when they should be betting, maybe. I checked behind. On the turn, we picked up the 5 and I decided to call with my bottom pair and I felt like that might have been a uh, a problem here because there's so many draws out there so I think generally speaking if we're playing a reg which we were I think we called too wide here um, yeah Yeah, but on the river, when, when all the draws bricked and I don't really block any of the draws with my 9-5, I think it's a pretty clear call to me. So my this range should, should call if it's in this spot. So turn I screwed up, river I didn't. And I think that's kind of how I felt during the hand, if I remember correctly. Anyway, next one. Uh, we've got jack eight and it's just me folding now. I wonder what this is about Heads up uh, They shoved and I folded. I just wanted to see how wide I'm meant to be calling against the shove. I think 
And I should be calling eight big blinds deep. We should be calling nearly any king, almost any king. Queen eight plus, jack nine plus. So yeah, 10, seven suited. What I've called 10, seven suited in real life. Probably not. But the rest of it I'm fine with. 10, nine, I might not have called 10, nine either. 10, seven suited and 10, nine I might not have called. The rest of it I think I would have called. Maybe, yeah, no, queen four I think I'll call. Yep, okay. So we made the right play. I just knew it was a bit close. Next one, we got queen nine. It's a limped pot again. And this one, I did a check raise. Right, so we're heads up. We're quite short now, 13 big blinds deep. They called, we checked. We hit the top pair and check. I'm gonna check my entire range here, so I'm not gonna look at these lead out options. Uh, I guess we can just see, like GTO base, how often are we meant to be betting here? Basically never, so we're seeing. Because we're meant to be just checking every time, or like range wise, I'm just gonna be always checking there. They check, sorry, we check, they bet the minimum, one big blind, and I went for the raise. Uh, calling is okay, but raising is the standard play. Okay, well, I'm not, nothing's unsurprising to me here. The turn, we bet again, and they called. I think the river, I was a bit confused what I was meant to do because I wasn't really sure how do I get value from my hand. I knew it still had a lot of value, even though the ace has now come out. And I felt like I should shove. Did I shove? Hang on, let's just watch the actual hand replay. We check raise, we bet, and yeah, we just shoved the river. Um, I mean, I only had half pot left, so I'm not, worried about it saying that I should be making the smaller sizing. I uh, raised bigger on okay hmm yeah I'm meant to be going for a really small sizing and that just allows me to raise fold I guess. I'm not going to be raise folding this particular hand but I guess we've got some other hands in there that want to be raised folding for value. So we do absolute range. Um, we've got plenty of queen x. Hands like 10-9. Yeah, I'm not actually going to worry about this spot. I think we played it fine. Uh, this, these river spots, if there's like very small EV difference here, and it's just a hell of a lot easier for me to just play it as a shove, I'm going to do that. We've got half pot left on the river. I'm not going to go for even smaller bet sizes, I don't think. I think it's just confusing. The important thing for me is betting is better than checking. It's quite um, a decent chunk difference, actually. Like one-fifth of a big blind difference in EV. So, yeah, worth doing. Very last hand to look at. We've got ace-queen suited. Heads up, 17 big blinds deep. They limped, we raised, they called. Okay. It's a uh, wet rainbow board. All middle card rainbow board, I should say. I went for the check and I think as soon as they bet, when they bet half pot, I didn't know what the heck I'm meant to be doing now because I didn't have a diamond, I didn't have a heart, and I didn't have a spade. I ended up just straight up folding and I felt like that was way too weak and uh, the solver agrees. So next time I got to make that call. Um, let's just do a pretend run out. Let's say um, the turn is now a four. We're meant to check. Uh, let's say they bet half pot again. I guess we fold, right? No. So we're meant to be really sticky, these spots. I mean, it's basically borderline whether to call or fold. 
But yeah, we're meant to be a bit more sticky than I expected here. When we ISO and then check, our range is very um, showdown heavy. Lots of showdown hands because you want to bluff anything that doesn't have showdown value. So we become very like narrowed range. So I guess we just have to be sticky on those kind of runouts. Anyway, I think the spots that I really learned from is um, those doing those small bet sizes, button versus big blind. I think that's something that I will take note of going forward. Um, a lot of the spots were nice to see just the clarification on that is how I should play. So that's cool. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed this mini series of videos. I just wanted to show you what a general day's grind is like. Uh, personally, if I wasn't a streamer, if I wasn't content creator, um, as a pro, I would have been playing four or five days a week of a similar caliber to what we saw today. Uh, sorry, throughout this video series. So if you thought, wow, that was easy, James, I could do that, then there is no reason why you couldn't also be a professional player. So I hope this encourages some of you guys who are thinking about making the leap to to uh, a profession. Or if it was a lot of work, then uh, I help, hope it helped you realize what it takes. Anyway, if you enjoyed it, please like the video. If you haven't done so, uh, please subscribe. I presume if you've watched all of these videos, you would have, right? I hope. Um, and I will see you around. I think if you guys liked this series overall, we'll do more. If you don't, I'll carry on trying out other concepts, other ideas, uh, and keep grinding these spin and goes. Um, I'm enjoying the $50 spin grind at the moment because it's been a while since I've just fully focused on the spin and goes. I have been doing some $100 spins, especially for the YouTube videos. Uh, but I do want to just like get back into a kind of comfort zone rhythm and I feel that at the 50s. As soon as I'm like getting a bit too comfortable, we'll move up to the 100s for sure. Um, really the goal is to be hitting the highest stakes now. We did the bankroll challenge, so I want to get back to the, uh, the highest stake spins they have to offer. On PokerStars, that's $500, even one case. So, you know, that's what we're aiming for. I don't want to just be um, stuck in the mid-stakes, and I can't see any reason why not in the future. So, thank you all for watching the whole series. I'll see you in the next few videos.